happening in this landscape eight years from now. So knowing that we have all of these relationships with bloggers and knowing how important they are to our business, we like to host parties and invite them. So one of the things that we do every single year is we host an annual blogger dinner, which is held at a somewhat trendy restaurant in New York City, and we deck the entire place out to feel like a Kate Spain New York apartment or it was a, a, a glittery basement, if you will. Those are all mylar balloons that line the entire ceiling and all of the walls. There's 4,000 balloons that we brought in that completely transformed this space. Um, we had glitter tablecloths. You can see our cocktail with our gold little tinsel straws. Um, our pink peonies on the table. Fortune cookies that had individualized fortunes based upon the blogger and their specific seats. Um, Brad Goreski is one of our brand stylists, so he helps um, kind of bring that flair to the brand. And then that bottom right, that's Deborah Lloyd. She, again, is our Vice President of Creative Design. And this is something that we did this past March. So South by Southwest is mostly known to be a music festival, but it actually is a huge interactive digital conference. So there are tons of brands that go to this conference every single year, us being one of them. And last year, I attended with a few coworkers, and I felt that the content there was really kind of boring. And what I got out of it was really having the opportunity to interact with all these other brands that are doing incredible things and having the opportunity to speak to the people who are doing my job at other brands and learning from them. So my idea was to get all of these people together in a room and host a really beautiful dinner. So we had the opportunity to do that this past March. Uh, we worked with Refinery29, who is a great partner of ours. And it was an incredible evening of intelligent conversations and really, really fun cocktails. We had a photo booth. We had um, a selfie mirror in the bathroom. We had uh, flowers that were actually, I know selfie mirrors are actual things. <laughs> Um, we had, we love flowers, obviously, and we knew that Austin, Texas didn't necessarily have bold, uh, bold blooms to our caliber, so we went to the flower market. This actually happened, I was there. I went to the flower market at 7.30, Wednesday before we left. We shipped all of the flowers to Austin, Texas, and arranged them for this dinner, because that's how important the details are for us. Um, so it was really tremendous. We had Keds there, um, and I'll go back into Keds later on in the presentation, but this happened in March, and March our travel theme was Capri, so there was these wonderful Capri heads that were all over the festival. We handed out over 100 heads to all these different brands, so it was just another way to kind of get us out there. Other collaborations, we work with Paperless Post, and if you guys do not know what Paperless Post is, I highly suggest you check it out. It's a kind of a digital card service, but they also have printed cards. We have a collection on there. We also have a very successful paper goods line. Um, so it was a natural extension for us to just kind of foray into the digital space. We have holiday cards, we have wedding cards. That's actually my wedding picture on one of the cards on Paperless Post, so I pulled it out so you can see. Um, but we have over 100 cards on the site, um, and it's very, very inexpensive to send a card. I think it's something like eight cents. Now you need to buy coins, but it, it's very easy to do. So really great for Mother's Day. My mom's received a few of them. And she thinks I create them, even though I don't. Um, but they are there for you to all to enjoy. We work with Fathom, and we create these really amazing city guides. We have over 25 different city guides in all different destinations. They're broken out into where to shop, where to sleep, where to eat. There's six different categories. Um, we have anywhere from Tokyo to Rio to Capri to New York City. The New York City one is actually one of my favorites, and it's broken, every city guide is broken out into neighborhoods, so it feels very, very um, accessible. So if you're going to the city for a day, you can kind of pick that neighborhood and figure out all of the Kate Spade, New York recommended places to go. We have partnered with Vespa in the past, and we've uh, taken our iconic prints and we've skimmed them on these Vespas. We did this partnership. This is the first promotion I ever worked on at Kate Spade um, over two years ago. Um, and we took our print and we put over four Vespas and we gave them away as a sweepstakes. In order for you to enter, you had to create a board on Pinterest. You had to pin 20 pins of how you would travel colorfully. And then based upon that, we went in, we selected our four top winners. And each of those winners won their custom printed Vespa. And two of the people, ironically, live in New York and we've actually seen them along the streets. So it's pretty cool. 
Keds is a product-focused collaboration, um, but obviously being an iconic brand, we wanted to work with another iconic brand, and we just had to put our signature stamp all over it. Um, so here are just some examples of some of the Keds that we've partnered with over the past year-long partnership. So this is nothing to do with what I do at all. I don't touch the retail space, but it's really, really pretty. And I just wanted to, I thought it was a great example of showing that Kate Spade New York lifestyle and how it's embodied within the retail space. So this is an example of when you walk into one of our stores, kind of what you see. So we have our marketing table right up front, which has our key um, product on it, as well as um, there's always some sort of a wall that either it's tape or it's foil or it's something, but that's typically what you see when you enter a store. Obviously, we love a good color, we love a good print. This is our shoe salon wall. This is our Fifth Avenue store, which has recently just been renovated. We love a salon wall, which you can see. There's no rhyme or reason to that, but just really a way of just getting all of these prints. And if you guys are into this, we have a Facebook exclusive program this year where you have the ability to purchase um, a different print so you can build your own salon wall. So stay tuned because we are getting rights for our next one, which will be going up very shortly. <coughs> Mannequins. We have fun little things. If you pick up a bag, there's little messages. This one says, pick me. Um, but it's all about that surprise and delight for our customers. So when you're in our store and in our environment, we want you to very much feel like you're on an adventure. This is our, this is our main salon, what we call it, our, our bag salon wall. But these are our key bags for the season. That bottom bag is called our maze bag. It is actually, it's this bag right here. It is our top bag. This weekend alone, we've sold 900 of them. So I, I don't know what the secret sauce is, but it's a great little crossbody and it fits everything you need in it. This is a mirror and it says, to stare is natural. So again, that kind of surprise and delight. Our dressing room where we actually have selfie screens. So that city skyscape, if you pull down the screen, it actually has a little hashtag on it so that you can take a picture of yourself in front of it for all of your friends. Hello, which is this cute little iPhone wall that we have. And right next to it, you can see our sunglass gallery. And that um, those eyes, when you look at it, they wink. So it's, it's kind of like a hologram. We have an iPhone case just like it as well. So then just a few things before you go. Um, and if I can leave you with any sort of tips for your career, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shoot it to you straight right now because I've had a lot of girls come to me for internships. I've interviewed a ton of people and I just feel like there's some knowledge that I'd like to share to all of you so that you can learn from others' mistakes. First off, clean up your social media profiles. The first thing I do when I get a stack of resumes, granted social media is my job, I look at your profile pictures and if you have a drink in your hand, pass over you. Take your drinks out of your pictures. It's not cute. It might be cute in college, but it's not cute to professionals. Name dropping does not impress anyone, especially me. I very much feel that if you're going to be someone, you're someone for who you are. I don't want to know where you came from, and I want to make sure that you... There's just a lot of people that come into the world, and my, my dad or my mom or this and that. It, it doesn't matter because the best types of people are the ones who work hard. Dress for the career you want to have. Short skirts are not cute either. Make sure, just, just, just remember, like, you're probably gonna be bending over, like, that's really unattractive, and I can't tell you how many upper thighs and butts I've seen in my career. Like, it's, make sure your dresses go to your knees, please. Make sure your pants are not too tight. Cleavage is, again, keep it tucked in. Again, just gonna keep it really top line for you. Um, make sure your communication skills are top notch. And that kind of goes on top with be prepared. Always have a notebook, a pen, and if you're going on an interview, bring your resume. Like emailing it to me is not sufficient because typically gonna be meeting with you in a conference room and I'm not gonna have my computer. Be prepared. I can't tell you how many people have interviewed and don't have a copy of their resume. <clears throat> going back to a pen and paper, Someone's gonna call you into their office one day, they're gonna tell you a bunch of stuff, and unless you have it written down, they're not gonna repeat it for you. In fact, that there's nothing that infuriates me more when I have to do that. Always be prepared. 
know your audience and act accordingly, especially when cocktails are involved. My first job out of college, one of my one of my responsibilities is going out to dinners and entertain. I would be entertained by publishers because they'd want me to buy their advertising. If you don't keep that in check, you will turn into a sloppy mess really, really quickly, and that travels. That never <laughs> happened to me. I always knew my place. But specifically, working at agencies, there's a lot of young people. There's beer carts, and there's happy hours, and there's this like. You need to be professional. New York's a very, very small place. Any city's a small place. It's small profession. Know your place. And just don't drink that much when you're in a, in a professional setting. Don't fall into the millennial stereotype. You guys have a tough act to follow. I can't tell you how many people, and I, I'm sorry to stereotype, but there's been so many people that I've had to let go because they feel once 6 o'clock hits, they're out the door. Their work's not done. They're on their phones texting all day long. They're on Facebook. Like, we know what's happening. I know you might think, like, we're older and we're not cool. I like to think I'm somewhat cool because this is my job. Be smart. Don't post on, <coughs> on any of your social channels at work. Everything is trackable on the internet. It's so, so easy. Just, just think before you do. Don't get um, caught up in the cachet of it all. And this is something I so very much believe in. Um, so many people, specifically within the fashion industry, get caught up in all of these fashion brands. Oh, this job sounds amazing. I'm going to work for Dior. Well, I guarantee that if your first job out of college for Dior, all you're probably doing is getting coffee. My advice to you is get a job. It might not be the most glamorous job, but get the job that's going to give you the most experience. Those skills are invaluable. I was promoting brands like Sag Harbor, like I said, like my grandmother used to wear, like those elastic waist pants. But I learned some really incredible things because I had the opportunity to work on a variety of brands. And your first job out of college, it's not going to be your last job. It's your first job for a reason. Get as much experience as you can. Learn as much as you can. Ask those really stupid questions that you don't want to ask on your second job. But if you're out of, like, just, I feel that so many girls, again, working for those brands and seeing it firsthand, I know the experience I got at my first job was way better than my friend who started working at Ferragamo. Work hard and work smart, and never stop learning. And that's something that I've had a bunch of jobs, and the reason why I've switched jobs is because I feel like I kind of hit a wall. And I'm not that old, and I want to continually make sure that I feel like I'm learning every single day. Every single day is an adventure. Every single day you have the opportunity to do something new. And once you feel like you've kind of stopped, then it's time for you to move on. You just kind of keep building on onto your portfolio and figuring out, okay, well, that job, I love this and I hated this. So then you take those learnings and you figure out your next job. I don't want to do that because I know I don't like it. So it's just a continually, continually evolve as, as yourself. <laughs> so, 47 minutes. <laughs> so thank you everyone for listening. I have my email address up here, my personal one, which is sparklyredhead at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at the sparkly redhead. Um, questions? Yes. <laughs> So I personally do not do any of that. We have a creative team. So I sit on marketing, there's a creative team, and every, all of our creative is done in-house for Kate Spade, which is really great. Um, a lot of the brands I work for before, um, their creative could be based out of Paris or, or Fendi was based out of Rome. So there's a large disconnect. Every single brand is different, but we tend to work with a different director every single season just because we want to continually evolve that story. So, did I answer it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Also, the blogs. Yes. The bloggers, the picture put up there? They create the pictures. So what we'll do is we'll provide them product, or we'll say, okay, um, for example, we did a holiday campaign. It was all about holiday entertaining. So we put together our top 10 products that we were looking to promote, because anything that we do, we have sales goals generated behind them. So we say, okay, we have these 10 products, but we're working with you because we like your aesthetic, we like what your audience is, we like who you are. We look for them to kind of put their creative flair on anything that we do. So we give them kind of the guidelines and then provide them the opportunity. Yes? Do you provide uh, the bloggers with like the statistics that they like, sell pretty much how they sell? So there is actually all, 
most bloggers, if you are a top 300 blogger in terms of traffic, there is an agency and it's called Reward Style. Um, that agency provides you all of these metrics. So they're actually able to see because every single blogger, if they're purchasing, so let me break this down. If someone, Carly from the College Prepster, she had all of those bags. She was able to sell all of those bags. She makes a commission on every bag that's sold. So again, if I have one other advice to you, not that I'm saying that you shouldn't get jobs, like bloggers make a lot of money. So if you can figure that out too, maybe not a bad side job. Um, so they're able to see the commission because they're making money as well as the sales that they're generating on our behalf. Any other questions? That was easy, guys. I thought I'd be challenged a bit more. <laughs> Any questions? I really mean it. Please reach out to me. I'm very happy to kind of have these conversations with all of you, knowing that I want to sat here too. So thank you guys very much.